endotoxins, yes. and a thin wall. Now, gram-positive bacteria can actually have exotoxins and endotoxins. Gram-negative bacteria only have endotoxins. I know it's a little weird and confusing, but just keep in mind, gram-negative, that's endotoxins. Gram-positive, they have exotoxins, but they can also have endotoxins. Okay, let's see. Um, gram stain, it comes out purple. Gram positive. Good. Thick wall. Okay. What do you know about E. coli? It's division one, so it has a thin wall, right? It's enterobacteria, comes from your digestive tract. That's where it gets the name coli. It's also non-acid fast, so it's gonna come out green if you do an acid fast stain. And what color is it gonna come out if you do a gram stain? Red. And what's the shape of the cells? Broad shape, tiny bacilli, yep. And if you see it on a Petri plate, what color is it gonna be? Whitish, it's gonna be white on the peach plate. Not white, white, opaque, bright white. It's gonna be like a creamy, translucent white. Okay. What if I asked you, if I did a gram stain of Staphylococcus or Streptococcus or Micrococcus or Enterococcus, what color is it gonna come out? Purple, why? Gram they're gram positive, right? Gram positive coxy. Coxy or gram positive, they're going to come out purple. Good. How about our two endospore forming bacteria, Bacillus and Clostridium? Uh. And Lactobacillus. They're thick walled, larger bacilli. They're also gram positive. How about your little broads like Escherichia coli and Enterobacter and Shigella and Salmonella and bacteria in the family Enterobacteriaceae? They're division one gram negative thin wall. They're tiny bacilli. I'll get you some props in a minute. Okay, don't forget your shapes and arrangements of bacteria. Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, Diplococcus, Diplobacillus, Streptobacillus. There's single bacilli, there's uh, coxi, there's spirillums and spirochetes, right? Okay. Okay. Don't forget the cellular morphology and the colonial morphology, right? I told you to look them up. You need to know the cellular morphology. That's the shape and arrangements of the cells for Staphylococcus epidermidis, Micrococcus luteus, Bacillus subtilis, and Escherichia coli, and Serratia marcescens, because those are the five we've looked at in lab so far. A lot of times you'll get a question about what's the cellular morphology, what's the colonial morphology. The answer is usually easier than you think. You're thinking, oh crap, I didn't memorize the cellular and colonial morphology of all five of those bacteria. I'm never going to remember. The answer is in the name. If it's coccus, it's round shape. If it's Staphylococcus, they're round shaped in clusters, right? If it's luteus, it's yellow. Remember, serratia was supposed to be red pigmented? So on the petri plate, it would have red colonies. Yours just started to produce red. It wasn't completely red. 
So a lot of times the answer is already there. It's not too hard to figure out. Remember serratia are the red bacteria. Micrococcus luteus are yellow. Staphylococcus aureus, aureus means gold. And you saw some of them on your Petri plate. Okay, did that one. Well, I think I have the same question in there twice. With different options for the answer, huh? Okay. Remember, we talked about fermentation. And when Dr. Pasteur was looking at wine, if the wine turned, if the grape juice turned to wine, that was alcohol fermentation. If the wine turned to vinegar, that was acetic acid fermentation. And gangrene, the ga gas gangrene gives off butyric acid, that's butyric acid fermentation. Um, when we looked at yogurt, the milk, lactose, turns to yogurt, which is tangy. That's lactic acid fermentation. You also have lactic acid fermentation in your sore muscles, right? And, okay, remember which stains are basic and which are acidic? Purple, blue, red, and green. Crystal violet, methylene blue, saffronin is red, brilliant green. Those are basic dyes. Negative stains, nigrosin, which is India ink, black, Congo red, and eosin. Those are your negative stains, so with the acidic charge. Okay, you gotta read your documents that are in Canvas, because sometimes there's questions on them that I'm gonna ask on the quiz. Do you know what prebiotics are? Do you know what probiotics are? Well, I'm not use Probiotic is healthy bacteria. You want healthy bacteria on your body, in your body, and particularly in the digestive tract. So foods like yogurt that are naturally made by fermentation or even manufactured, um, they have healthy probiotic bacteria in them that contribute to a good healthy flora in your body. So they actually, to some foods, add an extra, add extra probiotic bacteria. But these probiotic bacteria, they need to hang out. They need fibers to hang out on. Remember the beer chips I showed you? They throw those strips of beech wood in the beer containers. Why? So the probiotic yeast, the yeast that ferments the beer, has something to hang out on, something to cling to. Same thing with prebiotics. They're fibers. You need to have fibers in your digestive tract for your probiotics to hang out on. So some foods add prebiotics also. You especially see it in dog food for some reason. They add probiotics and prebiotics to dog food. They're giving the dogs fiber and healthy bacteria. So the healthy bacteria have something to live on in the digestive tract. That's the prebiotic, is the fiber. Okay, you know what commensals are? That's your good guys. You live together peacefully, mutually beneficially, commensal, as opposed to your pathogenic bacteria, which are the ones that might have an opportunistic infection, gets out of control, your commensal turns into a pathogen, so to speak, or pathogens that come from your environment that make you sick. Okay, why do we even stain our bacteria? Make it easier to see them. Right? We can see the shape and arrangement of the cells because we need contrast. So we stain to see contrast. Makes it easier to see the cells in our microscope if they have better contrast. That's one of the things that improves resolution. If we can see the shape and arrangement of the cells in our microscope, it helps us identify the bacteria. Right? Helps us see the cellular morphology better. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, you know what? I might not have mentioned this yet. Let's do this. Penicillin targets what? Cell wall. Cell wall. The cell wall. What specific component of the cell wall? The peptidoglycan. So if I'm gram-positive 
cell and I have lots of peptidoglycan, or I'm a gram negative cell and I only have a little peptidoglycan, plus it's covered by that outer membrane, who do you think is going to be harmed more? What? The positive. The gram positive bacteria. Penicillin harms gram positive bacteria more than gram negative bacteria. In fact, most gram negative bacteria are resistant to penicillin because the little bit of peptidoglycan they have is covered by an outer membrane. But if you're a gram positive cell and all you got is peptidoglycan and a lot of it, and it can damage a lot of your peptidoglycan, you're really vulnerable to penicillin. So penicillin gets gram positive cells much, much better. It's meant for gram positive bacteria, not gram negative. And remember who's gram positive? All your coxy and both of your endospore formers. Bacillus and Clostridium are your endospore formers, they're gram positive. And all coxy are also gram positive. So they're going to be susceptible to penicillin because of that thick wall of peptidoglycan. Oh boy. Okay, got to know your shapes and arrangements of the species and a little bit about cellular morphology. You need to know the two genera that are endospore formers. Where do endospore forming bacteria come from? Yeah. The dirt, right, they're in the soil. Can you name a spirochete? What? Syphilis? Good. What's the scientific name for syphilis? Remember that one. Trypanema pallidum. There's another spirochete causes Lyme disease. What's the name of that? Borrelia. Borrelia burgdorferi. Good. Okay. Sometimes you don't know the answer to the question, but you do know what it's not. Read the question. Look at A. Could it possibly be A? Or there's no way it could be A. Cross it out. Look at B. Does B answer the question? Or is there no way? No way. Cross it out. So sometimes you don't know the answer, but you know which ones are not the answer. So figure it out by process of elimination. Let's say you eliminate three of the choices and you're down to two. Well, that's better odds than you had before. Guess one of the two. You see what I mean? Okay. Do you want me to uh, write the species of the bacteria that you need to know on the board? Yes. yes. Ooh. I'll put them here. Here's my punishment, the biohazard box. That'd be good for a hazing. Stick somebody's head in there. <laughs> well, that was real cool. I'd probably be arrested for that. All right. Okay. Uh, Escherichia coli. What shape are those cells? Bacillus. Bacillus. Little tiny single bacilli. Bacillus subtilis. What shape are those? Bacillus, right, and they can be in chains, so it might be a streptobacillus, and they're larger than E. coli. And these could have endospores, and those wouldn't, right? And who else did we have? We had serratia, marcescens. Okay, does anybody remember when you did your direct stain, serratia marcescens were tiny cacobacilli? They almost looked like E. coli, didn't they? Yeah. These two look very similar. And uh, then you had Micrococcus luteus. What's its other name? Micrococcus is a staphylococcus. Sometimes it'll occur in tetrads. 